Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Here we talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste. And what better way to live zero waste for free than by fixing the items you already have. And also making some items yourself, like this fruit basket. So we're getting ready to move back into the RV. We're currently at my dad's house. Big announcement, drum roll please. We're moving to Minnesota. Dan is starting his first season as a seasonal park ranger, an interpretive park ranger. He'll be giving tours and stuff like that. You missed that we live in an RV. Um, with the exception of this winter, we are now going to be living back in the RV full time. Dan will be doing a summer season up north, a winter season down south, and we'll be moving around for the next couple years, which hints why this is my full-time job. So Dan is out currently working on the RV, things like plumbing, electricity, and stuff like that, and I'm working on more of the cosmetic aesthetic stuff, one of them being this fruit basket. But as you can see, it's not quite long enough. I don't know why I made it this size originally. So what we're going to do is essentially just crochet another rectangle and then sew them together in the middle. And if you wanna learn more about how I personally make my hobbies zero waste, you can check out this video. I'm not really sure, why is it sticky right I didn't glue this down. Let me count the rows, 35, perfect. Nice even number. And then I made this up on my own. <laughs> I didn't follow a pattern or anything. I almost said recipe. I make these market bags and I essentially just used the meshing from the sides of these bags to make the meshing on this. Also, after this, I'm going to rewrap the table legs with twine. They are, are cat scratchers in the RV so that they don't take up any more room. And Mochi loves the stand up cat scratchers. And then at the very end of this video, we're going to be dyeing our comforter. We love our comforter from Buffy. We got it in white and we worked at an outdoor job all summer. So this comforter got so dingy since we walk by it all the time in the RV. It's not like a clean environment in there. And then we have Danahi, a black dog who also goes outside. So to hopefully cover up some of the Staining, and I've never dyed anything ever and it's a comforter so I have to dye it in the washing machine I'm gonna follow Rit Dye's instructions see how it goes it's draining no it's draining again <laughs> gosh I hate these smart washers but let's start with the easy projects Okay, so I'm taking a break from the crochet. My hands be hurting. I had my first occupational therapist at the VA take one glance at my hands and say, yep, you have tendinitis. An occupational therapist while I was active duty and two different primary care doctors just say, mm, you're too young to have hand pain and then stopped the conversation. Anyway, I'm gonna watch this video from Rit Dye. So that way I know how to do it correctly. I'm not as nervous as like, staining the washing machine as I am just not doing the whole dye process correctly and then wasting all of the dye. <laughs> And this is what happens when it gets stretched out. They are both 35 rows. I think I'm just gonna have to bring it up like this, sew them together, and then wet this side, and then let it shrink. When, um, I'll probably wet it with hot water so that it hopefully shrinks a little bit and they're the equal, they're equal size. It looks much better from farther away. You can tell on the camera though that this is like, <laughs> this is dirty and that's the new stark white section. But I think over time it will get better. But wow, that is gonna hold a lot of stuff. What I might do also is put like a ring of hot glue on the edges so that it doesn't slide off. Eh. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that one just slid off very easily. Let's go put it in the RV and see what it looks like. It's really saggy and not saggy back there, but it'll do for now. Here's what the RV looks like. Sink is gone. We're getting a new sink. We're adding a door under there so that we can have better access to stuff in the back corner. We're going to add a door there so we're going to have under under oven storage. And then Dan's working on the plumbing right now. And then it's quite a mess in here. We're doing a bit of a decluttering as well as doing some maintenance. So you'll see the finished product soon. We're going to move on to these. So what I'm going to have to do is take all this old rope off and then replace it with new rope. It is 100% jute, I think, twine but I did glue it on with hot glue, so I made it um, non-compostable, as well as we don't have a means to compost this right now anyway, so I'm, I'm gonna have to landfill it, so let's get to work.
That was way easier than I thought it would be. That took me like three minutes. And the good news is, if we do want to like sell the RV, that was very easy to take off. And just a little bit of hot glue is left. Ooh, which that's coming off really easily as well. This is great news because I was a little bit worried about doing this and then worrying about the resale value of the RV. <laughs> if I recall, it's not it's not the worst thing to do in the world. It's a little tedious, which is why I have an audiobook. Let's make sure I have enough twine. I did count three. Sweet. And I have one left over for if I need any extra space. Here it is. That did not take nearly as long as I thought. The worst part is the twine rubbing on my thumb for that whole time. And here's this other old one. Here's what they look like. So yeah, that'll get the job done. Cool. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one. And then I think it should be time to dye the comforter. Before we actually dye the stuff, I need to figure out if I need to use salt or vinegar as like an extra fixative, essentially. Dyeing tinsel, should I use vinegar or salt? Wow, I'm surprised I got an answer. I need a cup of salt and some warm water. First step is to put it on the wash mode, put it on, we'll do bedding again. And then I'm just gonna sit here essentially and watch it fill up. And then once it's full, we add the dye and the salt. Okay, the water just shut off. That's not nearly full. Is more water supposed to come out? Let me hit start and see what happens. No, it's spinning. I can deep fill, here we go. Let's pause. I want deep fill with hot water. Let's hope that works. Okay, more water is coming out. Hopefully that works. I'm gonna go ahead and get my dye all shaken up. I got my salt water over here. I'm so nervous. Okay, it started to spin. That's like still not enough water though. Do I just pour it in and hope for the best? I just, I don't think it's gonna add more water. I'm gonna try doing deep wash again and see if it gets enough water. I mean, I guess alternatively, I could like bring a couple bowlfuls of water and top it off. But I just, I really don't think this washing machine is big enough for this comforter. If it's uneven, it's uneven. Let's go in with the salt. And then I think I'll just do one container of water plus a bottle of dye. Um, and then just the hopes that that's enough water. I'm scared. <laughs> how many times am I gonna say that? That's sage green. It says sage. Look how dark this is. <gasps> it's, it's like purple gray. I'm gonna trust the experts at Rit Dye. Listen, at the end of the day, surely anything will be better than the color it was. It's draining. Why are you draining? No! No! Ugh! What are you doing? Did it, did I reach capacity with the water? I only have one more bottle of dye left. A tragedy in three parts. We're gonna let it fill back up. I'm gonna add my one bottle of dye I have left and hope for the best. It's not the end of the world, but I am in utter shock. Great, rinse off that layer of dye. Wow, it is It is gonna be green though. It's washing off the purple. We'll go ahead and prepare this one last bottle of dye I have. I am a flabbergasted. I'm mostly mad because these are like $5 a piece. My only guess is that I I caused it to reach capacity, and so it like, it sensed that it needed to drain. Ugh, ugh, I'm so upset. Hello, it's another day. Good news, the lighting's better, because it's daytime. Um, here's what the comforter currently looks like. Not bad. I think it has some potential. This color isn't bad. I'm going to go ahead and put all of the bottles of dye into one bowl with a little bit of water, <laughs> to hopefully help it dilute a little bit and spin around. As well as, I think like every 10 minutes or so, I'm just gonna get in there with my hands and like mix the comforter around so that it gets as even as possible. Oh no, I don't know if I have enough salt. <laughs> I had Dan, instead of getting four sage, get three sage and one Kelly green, just so that way the sage, it brings out the green qualities of the sage and not just the gray qualities of it. Let's just get going. I'm scared, <laughs> as always.
looks so good. I think, yeah, I'll just have to get in here and mix it around. <laughs> I'm gonna look a little sickly after this. Oh jeez. I need something to like sink it down. Cause this, this part has plenty of room, but it keeps floating to the top. I guess in theory, I could also just close the lid and let it soak in here for a while. Okay, you can see it now. It's draining again. <laughs> well, now I know why it drains. The good news is I got all four bottles in there and it was in there for probably 20 minutes. Not as long as it should be. It should be about 30. It looks good. It's not perfect. I need to do <laughs> might need to do round three. It drains when you have it paused for too long. Gosh, I hate these smart washers. I just want to soak my bedding. Anyway, let's add the fixative and we'll see how it goes. Well, the problem now is too. Okay, I can just pick rinse and spin because I don't want it to wash because then it'll wash all the dye off. Ugh, I'm worried. <laughs> Normal. Let's put it now on cold to hopefully help the dye stay better. Okay, it's time. <gasps> it looks pretty good. <gasps> this is like exactly what I was picturing. Look at this. I think it's gonna have kind of a tie-dye effect. As you can see, there's a lighter spot here, a darker spot here. So I think it'll look kind of cool and earthy and mossy. <laughs> OMG, it's so pretty. It's so uneven. Hey, no dryer kitty. But for the most part, like, <laughs> it's not so bad. I just don't know if I wanna spend another $30 to hopefully make it better. I immediately just put my camera away and laid this out and it looks not so good <laughs> looking at it all spread out like this. So I think I am going to buy more dye, do this again. Um, but here's what it looks like right now, not good. But like this color right here is lovely. Oh, it's really uneven there too. Yeah, it's like so much splotchier than I thought, like this ring of dye right here. And I just really don't want that on display. So I'm gonna fix it. Live reaction of pulling it out of the dryer. When I put it in here, it looked really cool. It had gotten really dark from the third round of dyeing. It wasn't even though, but it looked like a good tie dye this time instead of just splotchy and bad. Fingers crossed it looks good. Whoa, okay, so it's still damp. But I think this looks pretty cool. It's really, really dark. Wow, look at that. The camera makes it look so gray. I promise it's green. OMG, I think it worked out. With a garment that big, it's just so difficult to get it perfectly even unless you have like a trough. Method wise, it works really, really good in the washing machine. It's just so hard to get an even dye on a comforter. Okay, here it is, fully dried. It, it's splotchier than I thought it was. But like from here, from a distance, even just a couple feet, it, I think it looks really nice. There are some darker areas, some lighter areas, some medium. It does have a tie-dye-ish effect. It's definitely not all the way even, but when you actually look at it up close, as I'll show you, it does look really, really splotchy. Both sides too. I think the side that I have up right now is less splotchy than the other side, so this will just be the up. It's our bedding for our RV. Our RV doesn't even have space for guests. People might take a glance at it if they peek their head in, but it's better than stained white. I think it fits the vibe of the RV. It's gonna be really homey and really cozy. It's from Buffy, by the way. If I didn't mention them, you can shop with them down below. That's all. Thanks for coming along with me on round three of the dyeing. Cue the outro. Thank you for coming along with me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing this, filming this, and getting our RV all spiffy and a little more aesthetically pleasing. Should I do an RV tour, an updated RV tour? Because the last RV tour I did was just like very bare bones talking about the eco aspects of it, but Dan has done a lot of changes. Shut up, I'm working here. And if you've liked these last few vlog style videos, let me know if you like them or don't like them. If you do like them, let me know what sort of vlogs you do wanna see moving forward. So as I said, we are moving to Minnesota and Dan is gonna be a full-time interpretive park ranger giving tours and guides and stuff. And I'm going to be volunteering full-time in order to secure us free housing. <laughs> I mean, we have the RV, but it's going to be free hookups, free water, electric, and laundry. It's not going to be 40 hours full-time, but it is going to be at least 20 or more hours a week. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to do in-depth vlogs like this, this summer. And let me know what sort of content you wanna see around vlogging, around being a park ranger, a park ranger being a national park volunteer, or just living on the road again. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Thank you for coming along with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. Ooh, I'm really worried about him dying consistently. Any, that's the right word. That's for a thumbnail. <laughs> well, I thought, I... What? Yeah.